<laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Honey Houston. It has been a very long time since I have recorded a Twin Movement video. Um, today, I finally got out of bed. I've been on bed rest for quite some time, once you guys to forgive me. Um, I'm about eight and a half months pregnant, and Morgan's almost here, which is a new baby. So, but, um, today in church, a lot of things stood out to me. And so, with that being said, I felt like what appeared to me is something, and what, what appealed to me, I should share it with you guys. Um, and so, I'm going to share this with you. Um, the scripture that I looked up on my own, if you have your Bibles or your tablets, I put on my tablets and screen is lit, so it's a lot more interesting to me, I guess. <laughs> um, it was Ecclesiastes 5 and 5. Um, and the scripture itself is that it, it is better it is that thou should not vow than, than that thou should have vow and not pay. Now, the scripture itself made me look into, okay, so, we all have our different definitions of what a vow is. According to the American Dictionary, vow is a solemn promise, pledge, or a personal commitment. Here's the catch with the commitment. It is better for you guys not to make promises. And this not only to us as humans, a man making a woman a promise, a woman making a man a promise, that is as much as to God as well. Um, we as humans, we have a misconception of talking to God, I guess if you want to say it like that. The situation at hand is that we'll have a tendency to say, hey, um, God, I'm going to give my tithes and my offering and I'm going to make this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sow this seed and then we ask God for something in, in, in practice and sure indeed when you put in to your account you should be able to make a deposit is that correct? yes but there is some stipulations to this you can't ask God for Something you're not doing right by God, and believing that because you're giving your seeds or your tithes and offering in this day and third, that God shall automatically bless you because hey, I gave my tithes and offering, so you're obligated to bless me. And in some ways, no, He's really not. That's good. Continue to give your seeds and your tithes and your offering, but you can't. Sin in the process. It's not like like that's like rewarding the child for being bad all week because they chose to do their homework today. No, that that don't work like that. You have to live accordingly. You have to do what you do. In the situation we're dealing with, human nature and making empty promises. Is a whole nother ball game. When you tell someone something or you promise someone something, especially if they didn't ask you for it, and then you don't come through, and then you wonder why that person has issues with you or is developed. What 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 happens is you make them develop trust issues. And you're saying, I can't make them do anything, but yet yeah, you can affect them very vividly. When you're telling somebody something, telling them one thing or another, and then when it comes down to it, you don't come through, yeah, that's an issue. Now, me as a human, I developed 
a defense mechanism when it comes to that specific area. I have a tendency to tell people don't, because I don't ask for anything. I try to make that a very strong trait of mine, not to ask. Don't say something to me and you're not going to do it. Especially because I didn't ask you. I, if, if, if you d don't offer something if you don't have the intent to even uphold your end of the bargain because that's a problem. And then what will happen is, I don't ask for why? Why? What am I asking you for something for? Because now I cannot trust you, especially if it's a repeated offense and it's the same thing that you've been continually doing, and continually doing, and continually doing. No one wants to deal with somebody that they cannot count on in any way, form, or fashion. Especially if the person that you're doing this to is somebody who has come through not just one time, but every single time. Just the same. This is it's just the same with you. Jesus comes through every single time. So when you lay before him and you cry and you beg and you ask for things and then he gives you what you ask for. But when it's your turn to do what you oh God, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. For you to do what you're supposed to be doing for Jesus. That puts you in a very, 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 very bad position because, see, Jesus will hear your prayer but close his hand. So you have to figure out what you're going to do as far as that ending giving situation that you got going on. It's like we as people, we as Christians, we as people who are trying to get closer to God have to understand that sometimes it's just you and Jesus. And as people such as myself who has a, have a very, very, very big heart, I have to learn not to allow people to do anything to me that God wouldn't do to me. Why would you, why, why would I allow a human, a simple person, to do to me what God wouldn't do to me? That's, that's a big issue. So if God gave me promises in his word, and I can stand on his words, I can give him back his word because this is what he said. This is his promise that I, that, I won't, that I won't lack. He won't give me a spirit of fear. And all these things are inside of the Bible. If you get to read in your Bible, God has promised us a lot of things. And one only thing that he has not promised us, promised us is that things will be easy. Why shall it you do it? I, I'm not gonna let you do anything to me that God wouldn't do to me. It's like you have to you have to stand on that, you have to believe that. And it's like at this point being human is no longer an excuse for being blatantly disrespectful and evil to other people. I'm human, I'm only human. I have needs. I'm only human. Jesus was human too. He was human. He was born human. He wasn't born some magical little alien. He was human. The devil put him through many tests, many temptations, and he never broke as a human. He went to the cross and died as a human. He had the choice to walk away. The choice, the freedom to choose was given when Eve took a bite from the apple and they realized the wrong from the right. So, before Jesus came, the freedom to, uh, to choose was there. And God and Jesus had a choice to do all of those things. But he made the decision to stand up as an upright man and do what God missioned him 
to do. We're all born with a calling, we're all born with a mission as people. So it is up to you to decide what you're really going to do. Now you know what's wrong and you know what's right. You know it's wrong to make empty promises. You know it's right to be a man and or a woman of your word. Yes, you're a human. I get it. Yes, some things do not go according to plan. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But at the same time, your integrity and that person's confidence is in what you just did. Now, the Bible tells us not to trust no man. You have to trust Jesus in order to trust that person. And if God is working through him, then trust will be just fine. But at the same time, if you're walking around, making empty promises, doing everything out of the sun that you know is possibly not even nowhere near right, yeah, things are going to go wrong in your life. It is possible for you to be in the wheel and your spouse to be outside of the wheel. It's possible. So, the possibility is there, yes. But if you can hear God clearly, then you as a human being have to make the choice for you to move forward and where you know where it is. Thank you so much.